Now to our exclusive interview with a Scientology insider who knows how closely the cult controls the lives of its most famous followers. Amy Scobie was in Scientology's inner sanctum. She has first-hand information on the closely guarded secrets of its reclusive leader and what happens when he loses control. Brian Seymour has the story. You're not talking about pharmaceutical drugs, Panadol. You're talking about illicit drugs, illegal drugs. Correct. And that is why it is my honor to present our first Freedom Medal of Valor to the most dedicated Scientologist I know. Well, this just goes to show that this organization is toxic from the top. Intense and evil. Almost impossible to please. And egotistical, beyond imagination. But, uh, For 27 years, Amy Scobie and her husband, Matt Pesci, lived in an alternate universe where mind control, brutality, superstars and cash all combined to convince them they were mankind's only hope. Amy was just a teenager when she was recruited into Scientology. It was Halloween in 1979, and 14-year-old Amy Scobie was sent all on her own from her home in Seattle to here, the Church of Scientology in Los Angeles. She began life and work in the organization's elite unit called the Sea Org. It was there she met some of their brightest stars and learned some of their darkest secrets. During her three decades inside, Amy managed the Scientology Celebrity Center, rubbing shoulders with A-list converts. I was talking to Shelley um, and she was telling me about how dedicated Tom Cruise is to Scientology. The Shelley she was talking to was Shelley Miscavige, the wife of Scientology's leader, David Miscavige, who is best friends with Tom Cruise. And he said he would join the Sea Organization, which is where you sign for a billion years and you it's a live-in, work-in situation, that he would do that if, um, but he's unqualified because of his previous drug history. And she told me what drugs he took, which I won't get into, but um, she did tell me Illegal that... drugs? It, drugs that disqualify him for the Sea Organization. The most respected and dedicated Scientologists like Amy are expected, even required, to join the Sea Org. Tom Cruise did not join. Because he took those drugs, he's no longer um, qualified. He's not qualified to join the Sea Organization, but otherwise he'd be here in a heartbeat. Instead, Cruise stop went on to movie mega stardom and marriage. I'll stab you. During Cruise I'll stab you. and Nicole Kidman's 10-year union, Amy was ordered to interview staff to work in their Pacific Palisades home. Ultimately, she says, Tom was told to choose between Scientology or Nicole. I know that it wasn't considered a big loss for the church because she has um, her father somehow connected to psychiatry or psych uh, psychologist or something like that. Kidman's father Anthony is a clinical psychologist which makes him an arch enemy of Scientology and Tom Cruise. Oh, I'm going hard at those guys and their range. You know, these uh, psychiatrists, I just, I've had it, absolutely had it. It's disgusting. Amy told us that Nicole Kidman studied Scientology more than anyone had realised. She says Kidman achieved the state of clear and started on her operating Thetan levels, the same path taken by John Travolta, Kate Sobrano and James Packer. I like the fact that she is her own woman, you know, and she made her own decision and if it wasn't for her, then she was able to leave and not stay, you know, under their find. Perhaps the most disturbing of Amy's revelations are about Scientology's leader, David Miscavige. David Miscavige jumped up onto the table and lunged at Jeff and knocked him and his chair over into my cubby right at my feet. And um, he's struggling with him and kind of strangling him and knocking him about. And, um, and Jeff was just completely shocked. The victim of this unprovoked attack, Jeff Hawkins, spoke to us in February. His account matches Amy's. I don't expect the head of a religion to physically assault and threaten his staff the way that man does. And I've seen him go off on people like that just out of the blue several times. The celebrities, the big names, the Travoltas, the Cruises, they don't, they don't know. They're shielded from all of this nasty 
horrendous stuff, aren't they? They are. They're, they're handled with kid gloves because you want them happy and satisfied. Worse still, Amy claims she was raped at age 14 by an older Scientologist, whom she does name, and Scientology covered it up to avoid bad publicity. I was told, don't tell anybody because it would be bad PR for the church. You, it, we could just handle our own. Amy and husband Matt escaped in 2005. Today they run a furniture business in Seattle. Well, to Senator Zenapon, I would say uh, thank you. Amy has joined calls worldwide for a Senate inquiry proposed by independent Senator Nick Xenophon. If the leaders of the Church of Scientology think that this will all go away, that it will be back to business as usual, then they are deluded. Too many good people are coming forward with serious allegations, with serious concerns about this organisation. Too many lives have been destroyed. Amy's book, Scientology, Abuse at the Top, is due out next month. Already, Tom Cruise's lawyer, Bert Fields, has written to her threatening to sue. Mr Cruise has no drug history whatsoever. He has never used illegal drugs of any kind. And he writes, Scientology had nothing to do with Mr Cruise's divorce from Miss Kidman. Amy says she's not worried about being sued, but she would like to talk with Tom Cruise. I would tell him, and it would be a personal communication, that it's very irresponsible for him to hold up David Miscavige as a leader of leaders when he's abusing people. And if he doesn't know that, get informed. These are the times we will all remember. Were you there? What did you do? And I do care so very, very, very much. So what do you say, we're going to clean this place up? Huh? Yeah. Okay. That's Brian Seymour reporting with more from inside the Church of Scientology.